A sheriff investigates the truth behind the strict regulations governing a massive underground silo with the help of a mechanical engineer. In a dystopian future, a community resides in an enormous underground silo, but with a spiral staircase in the middle accessible to 144 floors, which are categorized into three level brackets, up top, mids, and down deep. The citizens are unaware of their true history or purpose for being in the bunker. What they do know is that the outside world is unsafe. Despite this, if someone declares that they want to go outside, they'll be given permission to do so, with materials to clean the sensors whether they do it or not. In a cabin in Up Top, Sheriff Holston Becker takes his badge and pins it to his shirt. He then places a vase of flowers in front of the mirror and tightens the screws of the vent cover. On his way to work, he passes by the cafeteria, where a window looks out onto the uninhabitable wasteland outside. In his office, Holston writes a note that reads, double the flowers in front of the mirror, and then slides it into a folder. Afterward, he writes another note and unpins his badge, before placing it on top of the paper. Then he instructs Deputy Marnes to meet him at Holding 3, where he locks himself in the cell and gazes out the window at his lifeless wife, Allison Becker, wishing he could see her again, and regretting not listening to her three years ago. Sensing what Holston's about to do, Marnes tries to talk him out of it. However, the sheriff declares that he wants to go outside, leaving the deputy with a painful decision to report it to the mayor. Three years ago, Holston and Allison were informed via their silo mail that they had been granted childbearing status, allowing them to attend pregnancy within 365 days. Since that was their third time trying after two failed attempts, the couple was thrilled to receive the news. Following the good news, Holston and Allison headed to the cafeteria where they received congratulations from those around them. While enjoying their meal, Gloria unexpectedly approached them and offered fertility counseling. However, the sheriff was wary of her intentions, informing his wife that the counselor was a fraud for promising childbirth in exchange for following her instructions. As instructed in the email, the couple went to Dr. Leonard to have Allison's birth control device removed, officially starting their childbearing status. After a few days, Allison, who's a reporter in IT, headed to her office, where her coworker Karen shared different ways to get pregnant based on other couples' stories. Suddenly, IT boss Bernard reprimanded the reporter for posting an article about recovering deleted files without his approval. Nevertheless, Allison defended that she shared the post to educate people and help reduce the number of service calls received. Regrettably, Bernard took the article down, leaving Allison upset. Back at home, Allison confided in Holston about her work incident and questioned why they weren't allowed to inquire about their history. However, the sheriff reminded her that their only source of history was the pact and that his duty was to prevent any rule breakers from attempting to investigate anything above ground, as it could potentially put the entire community in danger. As the days went by, Allison got her period and assured Holston that they still had plenty of time to conceive. Later, Holston and Marnes met with Mayor Ruth Johns, who was anxious about a possible fire on their upcoming 140th Freedom Day. But the officers assured the mayor that the crowd would be under control during the event. While glancing at the cafeteria window, the mayor noticed that they were dirty obstructing the community's view of the outside world. However, the sheriff commented that the grime was actually a good thing since it had been a while since they sent anyone outside to clean. On her way to work, Gloria approached Allison and invited her to her home to ask a private question. To ensure their conversation wouldn't be overheard, Gloria turned on the faucet. She then proceeded to inquire whether Allison wondered about their history that the rebels deleted, or what life outside the silo really was. Ultimately, Gloria questioned whether Allison truly believed she was the type of person the pact would want to have children. Following her conversation with Gloria, Allison confided in Holston that the counselor had been unsuccessful in conceiving a child with her husband after multiple attempts, and believed that their infertility was intentional. However, the sheriff reassured Allison that her birth control had been removed, which meant they had the same chance as anybody else cleared for childbirth. While at work, Allison received a complaint ticket from a programmer in the midst who had a repair stall in the market. Due to her husband's duty on Freedom Day and everyone else taking the day off, Allison decided to work during the holiday. The night before the holiday, Allison took a trek down to the mids and stayed in a hostel so she could attend to George first thing the following morning. 
On Freedom Day, while Holston was on duty, Allison met with the programmer George. To her surprise, the computer guy not only read her post about retrieving deleted files but also printed it out. He also revealed that he had strategically timed his request to meet her specifically without raising suspicion from Judicial, who prohibited people from owning relics, which are objects from the time before the silo was built. To elaborate, George handed Allison an old hard drive discovered under a closet's carpet by an anonymous person. Despite the nearly full memory, there seemed to be no visible data on it, indicating that the data was hidden. As the entire community filled the staircases of the silo from top to bottom, Mayor Ruth delivered her speech. During her address, she celebrated the freedom that the community had obtained 140 years ago from rebels who had erased all of the historical evidence. She stressed that if it weren't for the founders stopping the rebels, the people inside the silo wouldn't exist. While Allison figured out the source of the relic, she wrote different inputs on the back of the printed article and crossed them out if they didn't work. Eventually, she was able to get the right input from the hard drive by using a magnifying glass, enabling her to retrieve the deleted files. George eagerly opened one of the files that contained a blueprint of the silo structure. However, Allison, who believed the information was too important not to be illegal, insisted that the programmer bury the relic. Although George believed that the information contained in the relic could hold the key to what they didn't know about their history, Allison argued that he might get sent outside because of it. Before storming out of the stall, she insisted that the relic be disposed of. Following Allison's departure, George made an intriguing discovery. He found a tunnel located on the lowest level of the silo, piquing his curiosity as to where it led. Meanwhile, Allison joined the celebrating crowd, and together they sang a hymn while lanterns floated in the air. However, that night, Allison was still troubled by the content of the old hard drive, leading her to interrupt that night's attempt to conceive. The following day, Allison went to work and informed Karen that she couldn't help George with his repair request. Shortly after, she excused herself from work, falsely claiming that she felt ill. Instead, she made her way to Gloria, hoping to find answers about why the pact was forbidding them from having children. That evening, Allison informed Holston that she would be taking the next day off, but in reality, she went to see George and demanded to see everything on the hard drive. During their search, they stumbled upon the last file containing a video from a cleaner who went outside. To their surprise, it showed that outside the silo wasn't bleak and dull like what they see through the cafeteria window, but lush and beautiful with birds flying in the sky. Following this discovery, Allison returned home and went to sleep, despite having only 7 hours and 44 minutes left in their childbearing status. The following day, Holston waited for Allison at their doctor's appointment, but she didn't show up. He attempted to locate her by checking the IT office, but Karen informed him that Allison had excused herself due to an illness. Upon returning home, Holston was surprised to find Allison waiting for him. She proceeded to reveal that the pact enforcers would never allow them to have children because she wasn't the docile and obedient type that they preferred. To convince her husband, Allison showed Holston the bloodied birth control device in her hands that she took out herself, proving that the doctor hadn't actually removed it despite what they were led to believe. Holston quickly fetched Dr. Leonard to get medical help. However, on his way back, Deputy Marnes informed him that his wife was in the cafeteria. Shortly after, Holston, Marnes, and Dr. Leonard hurried to the cafeteria where they found Allison standing in the middle, bleeding and exposing the truth that the display was a lie. She revealed that outside, there were green trees, blue skies, and flying things. Holston tried to stop his wife, but Allison insisted that she was not having a breakdown. Suddenly, she declared that she wanted to go out, causing a stir in the crowd, as it was an irrevocable request in the silo. As a result, Marnes had no choice but to arrest Allison. After the incident, the officers notified the compassionate mayor, who initially entertained the notion that Allison may have been misheard. However, Holston remained steadfast in his duty, and confirmed Allison's declaration was legitimate. Subsequently, the mayor requested any possible leads regarding who may have influenced Allison's drastic actions. Deputy Marnes implicated Gloria as the possible mastermind, who confessed to implanting the idea in Allison's mind that they're not the kind the pact wanted to have kids due to her and her husband's infertility struggles. Furthermore, they interrogated George and searched his stall, but failed to discover any valuable information. Ultimately, Holston surmised that Allison's inability to conceive may have been the cause of her actions. Subsequently, Holston went to see Allison in her cell, 
She revealed to him that she had learned that the pact had the ability to alter the contents of the screens, and that going outside would not result in her death. However, Holston refuted her claims and drew her attention to the window, where the lifeless bodies of three cleaners could be seen. Despite this, Allison believed that the pack was altering the screen images to keep the people trapped inside the silo. She pledged to clean the sensor if it was really a wonderful world outside. However, if the view outside was the same as what they see, she wouldn't clean. On the day of Allison's release, she donned a specialized suit and was given the necessary cleaning supplies. With tears in his eyes, Holston solemnly recited a passage and asked his wife for her last words. In a touching moment, they exchanged a final I love you. After Holston tearfully pressed the button to open the door, Allison entered and went up a ramp, leading outside. As the crowd gathered in the cafeteria for Allison's release, Holston made his way to her prison cell. Amid the applause that erupted when Allison began cleaning the sensor, the sheriff realized that she did it to tell him that the display was a lie. However, as Allison walked away from the silo and headed towards the gnarled tree, she suddenly collapsed, bringing the sheriff to tears. Two years later, Holston received the news of George's passing. George had been transferred to mechanical and reportedly fell from the 120th floor. However, Barnes revealed that an engineer claimed that George's demise wasn't self-inflicted. When the officers went down to see lower-level deputy Hank, the engineer didn't show up because she had to fix the generator that kept the silo running. As a result, the three of them visited engineer Juliet Nichols to interrogate her personally. In the present, Holston confides in Marnes, revealing that he's beginning to understand what Allison meant when he met Juliet. He expresses his strong desire to venture outside and find his wife. On the day of his release, Holston dons his safety suit and apologizes for the commotion as his final words. As he walks up the ramp, he's stunned to discover that Allison was right. The world outside is a lush green landscape. In the down deep cafeteria, people watch in astonishment as they witness the sheriff clean the lens before heading toward the tree where Allison perished. As he collapses near the tree gasping for air, Holston removes his helmet, the first time anyone's done so before. Finally reaching his wife, he collapses by her side. While the crowd is in shock, Juliet reacts differently and storms out of the cafeteria, accusing the sheriff of being a liar. As tension rises in the cafeteria, a fight breaks out between two individuals, causing a commotion. Knox, a mechanic, steps in to break up the altercation and reminds everyone of their duty to keep the silos, lights, and generators running. Enraged, Juliet storms down to her workstation and impulsively throws an object, causing one of the pipes to burst and send water gushing across the room. Upon reading Holston's note, Marnes makes his way to John's office, where the two share a drink and discuss the sheriff's release as a first in the silo's history. Despite getting offered the sheriff's position, Marnes politely declines citing his upcoming retirement. Meanwhile, Mr. Sims from the judicial approaches Deputy Brooks, who doesn't appear competent in intervening in two men fighting over a hammer. Later, Juliet visits a veteran engineer named Martha, explaining that her outburst in the cafeteria was because Holston lied about George. The day before George's demise, the programmer visited Juliet in the cafeteria during Cooper's celebratory transition as her shadow. However, George was paranoid because he and Juliet weren't officially sanctioned. The engineer tried to reassure him that their relationship was no secret, and that nobody cared. In a rush to leave the cafeteria due to the presence of judicials, George invited Juliet to his place after work to share his recent discovery. However, when the engineer went to his place that night, George wasn't at home. All she saw was a pouch containing a note and a PEZ dispenser, which confused her. The next day after hearing the news of George's demise the previous night, Juliet confided in Hank about her suspicion that George didn't end his own life, prompting the deputy to take the matter to Holston for investigation, which was why the sheriff personally visited her. During the investigation, the sheriff and Juliet went to the ventilation unit where George's body was found. Juliet insisted that George showed no signs of self-aggressive behavior, prompting the sheriff to order his deputies to investigate whether there were any porters present during the programmer's demise. After the others left, Holston noticed Juliet's watch and inquired if it was a relic, but she insisted that it was legal. He then urged her to disclose any information she had about George, emphasizing that he wanted to find the truth. 
While examining George's body, Holston and Juliet were interrupted by the returning deputies, who disclosed that there were no porters present, indicating that there were no witnesses present during the programmer's death. Later, Juliet took Holston to George's place, finally disclosing that George left a PEZ dispenser and a note that reads, remember where you last saw this? On the night he perished. To demonstrate the meaning behind George's note, Juliet took Holston to a prohibited passageway where they discovered numerous inscriptions on the wall, likely created by people who lived before the rebellion. Afterward, they descended through a manhole, leading to a massive machine that Juliet speculated was the remains of the silo digging machine. She added that the theory was that the founders had enclosed it with concrete to conceal it. Then, Juliet led Holston to George's makeshift camp beneath the ladder, where she last saw the PEZ dispenser. There she opened a box containing a collection of relics, revealing George's obsession with them. As they examined the relics, Juliet noticed a wire that leads to a suspended piece of steel. At its end is a bag containing instructions on how to recover deleted files and the old hard drive. Upon seeing Allison's handwriting behind the instruction paper, Holston revealed that Allison had worked with George on a repair request before her release from the silo, prompting the engineer to think that the sheriff was only helping her to investigate Allison's demise. Furthermore, Juliet believed that George's death had something to do with the hard drive he hid. However, the sheriff confiscated the hard drive, prompting the engineer to tell him that maybe if he listened to his wife, she'd still be alive. Triggered, Holston explained that he avoids working during the daytime since passing through the cafeteria reminded him of his late wife, whose body is still outside the silo's window. Eventually, the sheriff agreed to help the engineer, but with the strict condition that she remain quiet and inconspicuous. He also advised her to stop wearing her relic watch to avoid drawing unwanted attention. Before leaving, Holston gave his word that he would keep Juliet informed if he discovers any valuable information. In the present, Juliet points out that she held on to the sheriff's promise and waited for new information, but he never got back to her, revealing the cause of her outburst in the cafeteria. Upon Martha's suggestion to take a day off, Juliet confides in her that she never actually showed the sheriff George's entire note. She then reveals the second half of the programmer's message that reads, I found what I was looking for, which she believes was more dangerous than a relic. Meanwhile, as Mayor Johns goes through the list of possible candidates for the sheriff's position, Barnes reveals that Holston left a note nominating Juliet Nichols to be his successor. He added that if the engineer objects, he wants his badge to be given to her. Curious why Holston Holston nominated an engineer for his role, Mayor Johns wants to meet her in the Down Deep. Meanwhile, Juliet visits George's makeshift camp, where she recalls that her boyfriend secured a long rope to help him get to a door at the end of a short tunnel located somewhere at the bottom, which he saw on the blueprint in the hard drive. Upon realizing the dangers of his mission, Juliet voiced her concern about the risk of drowning if George descended into the water. When George promised to be careful, Juliet made a deal with him that she didn't want to know his discovery until after he completed his mission, to which George agreed. In her quest for answers, Juliet takes the rope and hurls it over the suspended steel beam, with the intention of rappelling down to locate the door that George had mentioned at the bottom. As she descends, she nearly loses her footing, causing her headlight to tumble into the water below. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.